Called order the Jacksonville Water and Sewer Advisory Committee on February the 11th, 2016. Before we start, I'd like to say we have a guest here, Mr. Jim Morton. He's just recently been appointed to the Anwasa Water and Sewer Advisory Board, and he wanted to come and see how our board meeting and all the different <clears throat> had any questions or something that he would be able to find out at a later date from one of us. All right, number one, call to order, which we just did, adoption of the agenda. Do we have any corrections or any changes to the agenda for tonight's meeting? One correction on the date, it should be 2016, not 2015. What did I say, 2015? No, we did it. Okay, well, 2016. <laughs> Do we have any any corrections or anything? <clears throat> any additions? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve. We have a, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. <clears throat> All in favor? Please signify by raising your right hand. Got everybody. Okay, it's been approved. Approval of the minutes of January 14th, 2016. That was a correction that was made. Thank you, Wally. You're welcome. Do we have any changes to the minutes from our last meeting? <coughs> okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve. The motion we approve. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All. In favor of that motion to approve the minutes? Raise your right hand, please. <laughs> motion carried. <clears throat> Finance presentation. Ms. Mays. Thank you, sir. I apologize in advance for anybody who already watched this. It's basically what we told the council the other night. So, Mr. Thomas, if you need to <laughs> take a break. Uh, uh, more, I just fill you in on where we were at the end of last year, where we're at for the six months, and then give you a few <coughs> thoughts about the budget. Um, this slide depicts the unrestricted fund balance in the water and sewer fund for the last five years. Um, unrestricted fund balance is basically the money you have to spend to do projects. Um, if you notice, it's been steadily declining for the last few years, and that's exactly what's happening. We're spending cash to do projects rather than financing them. This is the FY15 budget to actual comparison. You'll see that the user fees came in just a little bit higher than what we anticipated. Um, facility fees were just a little bit less. Um, those have been significantly higher in, in prior years. Um, in 2011, we've come down from 2011 of 3.8 million to now 0.7. Um, all other revenue came in at 100% of what we anticipated. The expenditures came in about $3.4 million less than we anticipated. The biggest thing there is, and I think we've talked to you all about that before, the tank maintenance, we anticipate paying all of that because the contract says we have to pay them 100% whether we continue or not, and then we don't pay 100% of the 10-year contract. So that's that's always about a million, a million two in savings in the budget. And um, six, year, six months last year compared to the first six months of this year, we're just a little ahead on the user fees of where we were last year, but right at 50% of the budget. Um, facility fees, we're a little ahead of last year as well, a little ahead of where we should be with the budget. And all other revenues, we're about twice what we were. That has to do with a transfer, though. We closed a project, transferred the money to the water sewer fund, and then transferred it back out to another project. So that's why it looks like it's way ahead. Um, the expenditures are about 45% of the budget ahead of where we were last year. 
This shows um, the outstanding debt at June 30, the principal and interest payments. It's a little bit misleading because we don't anticipate any new debt, but what you'll notice is there's a significant drop off from 2016 to 17 and then again to 18. It's about $2.7 million that it's dropping. But that's a good thing because we have the Parkwood project, which um, Deanna is going to be talking about in a minute. So that debt falling off will allow us to finance that project and it won't have a significant effect on the rates. Why is it dropping though? What's because it something's paid off. Um, okay. The original land app site, that okay. debt is starting to fall off a little bit at the time. Thank you. Is there a level that that um, you had it up there at 10 million? Is that a level that is tolerable and doesn't affect the rates, or is that just something that? I would say yes at this time, but as the operating expenses go up, that can affect whether that's tolerable or not without raising the rates. So if we have increase in operating expense, then that affects that. And we can balance that with not taking on as much debt? Increase in the operating expenses? If the operating expenses go up, we, if we keep the debt down, that'll help mm -hmm. mitigate that? Okay, yes. thank you. And for the budget, for it should say FY17. I don't know, we showed council this slide and I didn't even notice it that it said uh, 16. One of the things that um, we talked about was fuel. We had a significant savings on fuel last year, um, but we're gonna keep the budget about the same because I don't believe that gas prices are gonna stay where they are. And if we start dropping our budget for fuel pricing, then something else is gonna pick that up and, and we'll not have the money to pay for it when the fuel prices go back up. So that was a management decision. We're gonna budget at the same level we did last year. And some other things that are unknowns that are gonna affect the water sewer budget are health insurance. We've had some, a um, couple of pretty, I wouldn't say bad years, but heavy years. Um, and we haven't had any increases in what the city has put into that fund or the employee. I don't think that's gonna continue this coming year. I think that that's, that's gonna be an issue for water sewer fund and general fund and all the, the budgets. Um, something else that's an unknown right now is there's some new overtime rules. Um, the Department of Labor came out with a new threshold for um, exempt employees. It, it used to be a very low level and so we were primarily concerned with the test, the duties test, you know, is your work actually exempt work? but they're significantly increasing the, the dollar threshold. So Wally and I don't make $50,000, so we're not gonna be exempt anymore. It's gonna cost the city a lot of money. <laughs> anyway, um, the number has not been finalized. They got a lot of pushback. It, it is actually $50,000, and that's a doubling of what the number was before. Um, so they're re-looking at that number and have not come out with their final regulations. So we won't know until maybe right before the fiscal year starts whether that's going to affect the overtime or not. Um, we also shared with council that we have run into a refinancing opportunity for the revenue bonds that we issued in 2009 and 2010. The market's still really favorable for um, tax-exempt bonds. and. Um, we received proposals last Friday, and we're still analyzing those, but there's a opportunity to significantly bring that debt, debt service down even more. Is that because you're going to get a better interest rate mm -hmm. or because you're going to get a longer term? No, we are not extending the term. We would be getting a better interest rate. And still it would be paid off at the same time. That's correct. I think the term is still 14, 15 years, something like that, on those bonds. So we would just refinance them for the same term. There's 15 years remaining, or they were originally 15? No, they were 20-year bonds, so 13, 14, 15 years. What, what's it look like the new rates would be compared to the old ones? I don't know. The savings is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about $2 million, I think, over the term. It's not going to be all in one year, but over that 13, 14 years, it's going to be about $2 million in total, I think. Thank you. We, we have 
still some questions out to some of the proposers about their proposal to be sure that we, we're taking everything into account. And then the thing that I know y'all all want to know about is the water sewer rates. Um, Alan is here and he's been working on the rate model that we use. We've um, loaded up last year's budget and the CIP projects and um, I think that we're going to be able to go maybe without a rate increase for the next couple of years. Um, we're going to have to look at the CIP projects and how we fund them because as we fund the capital projects out of the fund balance then it goes away and it's not there to spend so we may have to look at the rate in terms of something to pay for capital projects in the future um, but right now if everything stays about where it is we're not we don't think there's going to have to be a rate increase for the next two or three years we had had earlier uh, that conversation about a minor rate increase uh, even if the model didn't call for it and we have not had that we we said we'd put it off for several months. Uh, is that due to be brought back up? Because yeah, we said we want our finance person here when we talk about that again. I'll put that on the agenda for next meeting. Can we put that on the agenda for the next meeting to discuss the rates? Yes, sir. Gail wasn't here, and what we had was a conversation <clears throat> that a small rate increase, 50 cents, a half a percent each year, would mitigate when the model calls for a six or ten percent increase and there's pros and cons to that and we had a very few um, discussion when did we discuss that before do you recall that when it was, was october? It november yes. october that's about right it was it was shortly after the new budget year yeah and i was just letting so the heated debate was uh you know don't ever do that or you know the advantages of doing it and as it was taking a lot of time, we tabled it to talk about it six months later. And, I, yeah. and we were promised you would be here when we talked about it again. <laughs> we discussed I'm what a half day. to <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it a half to 1% somewhere undecided at that time what we were going to do with it? Like I said, it was a heated debate, and we, I don't think we yeah, ever... I remember that one. <laughs> good, <laughs> didn't, get it, didn't get it zeroed into any one answer. Couldn't even agree on the philosophy, so... Well, I'm going to throw it back to you then come next month. We will have it back on your agenda Bring for your gloves, discussion. Bring the gloves, baby. Bring the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, basically that becomes, you know, a recommendation from this board as a philosophy to council ultimately is council's decision, mm -hmm. but we can certainly have that discussion. And that was the last thing on my um, agenda there, unless there are other questions. I can try to answer or get information back to you. How soon will you know about the bond refinancing? I had hoped that I would know today, but we haven't gotten the final answers back. So next week. That's a nice savings if you can do that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's better than I even anticipated. I know. If I'm cautiously optimistic that it's <laughs> going to come out um, pretty good. We have a section for RFIs in your Water and sewer report, we can just have Gail send us that information Great. and include it in the next. Of course, she'll be here for the incremental rate discussion anyway, but we'll include that in your next report too. Can we get a copy of the presentation she made? Uh, so we could keep sure. it for historical and refer sure. back to it. Sure. Any other questions for Gail? Good job. That all Gail and Jeff. Anybody have any questions for her? Appreciate it when she comes. Yes. <laughs> Good saving. Okay. Don't blame that she's not here every meeting. <laughs> well, Nina, are you ready capable. for yours? <laughs> yeah. Okay. CIP discussion. Deanna and I are going to kind of do this together. Um, what I will start with is at your place tonight, you had a revised packet of CIP projects. As I walked in, one of the questions right up front was, what's different than the last package that went out? Well, as you heard Gail discuss at the end, you know, part of what we're looking at is how do we handle the CIP projects so we, that we, you know, looking at timing, don't have, you know, 
impacts to the rate. So what we've done is um, we've looked at some of the projects that could actually be moved out, you know, whether they were development driven or, or something along those lines. So there's actually a few projects that moved from the time we put this together Thursday to send them out to you to now because we've had several meetings and discussions both with finance and with management about where we need to, you know, what our target needs to be. So we now have a more level five-year plan, although admittedly year three and I think it's five, mm -hmm. we're still going to have some work to do, but that's not what gets approved in the budget. Um, and we can talk about it when we get there, but in year three, one of the challenges is we have two projects that total $5 million. You know, the, the question becomes when we get to those two projects and they're both, you know, projects that we're going to need to do in the next five years, how do we handle that? So the good thing is we don't have to make that decision tonight, but those two projects are identified. So where we're really focused on is this the upcoming fiscal year, FY17, but the overall CIP as well. So we'll go over which ones have moved out. So with that, I'll let Deanna start. Before you do, you said, how do we handle that? Were you referring to how you do the construction or how you do the financing? Uh, more of how we handle timing, financing. It may be that we try to finance one of those or move it out or, yes. Okay. So, and that'll, that'll, you know, and part of those, as we get closer, we'll actually have some time to try to refine the scopes of those projects. You know, right now, that's a project that we've scoped, but we've looked at, tried, we've tried to look at a worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So it may be that we can define some of those scopes a little more narrow and, you know, bring down the cost of some of those projects. Can I ask a question of sure. Gail and you all? Are you comfortable with the rate in the unrestricted, uh, the amount of money in the unrestricted fund, or do you think you've had to put the brakes on stuff? Or do you, are you happy with it being that much lower? Than it had been. Well, we've had some preliminary discussions about what we want that to be. We haven't really had to worry about that for the last couple of years, and I think that precipitated some of this moving the projects out mm -hmm. to slow down the the drain on that. The rate that it's coming out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, the table that you're looking at is actually a comparison of all the projects that have been identified for um, in each of the last three years. And the last two and what we're proposing for FY17. And this isn't just in the build year, which is the funded year. This is actually over the five-year period. And so as you can see, we're, we're pretty much in line with what we've done in, in past years. Um, we've increased some projects in public services, and we've um, increased some in, in, in recreation and parks. So um, as you can see, we still have quite a few projects that the city is undertaking. In FY17, we've got a total of and one one project in community programs, which is the Surgeon City Civic and Environmental Education Center. We've got one slated in ITS, which is a fiber um, connectivity project. We've got 17 in public services. And just as a reminder, public services includes not only water and sewer, but we've got streets and sidewalks and some other um, combination projects. Recreation and parks, we've got six, one of them being the Lejeune Trail and Greenway that um, actually started construction um, a couple weeks ago. And we've got two projects in transportation. So we don't have broken out what water and sewer projects are. It's thrown in that public. Yes. Um, we're actually going to talk about some of those projects. But right we here. don't want to know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, just the way you presented that, I was getting confused. No, that, the, the, the last slide was just to give you, um, you the comment was made last, last meeting about how many projects that are actually in the entire CIP. So just wanted to give everyone kind of a sense of how many projects the city actually undertakes in over the five-year period and in one, one fiscal year. So in 17, just for utility projects, we're looking at six water, three sewer, and three combination projects. And combinations is water and sewer and maybe some um, streetscape projects. Again, looking at um, an overview for FY17 expenditures. Um, as you can see, as we discussed before, public services has the largest number of projects and is taking 58.5% um, of um, the expenditure for that calendar year, or the fiscal year, um, followed by recreation and parks and community programs, again being um, Sturgeon City Civic and Environmental Education Center. 
And um, this graph just kind of shows the um, where the funding source is coming from. The revenue bonds is um, the highest because that's going to be um, funding our the Parkwood Western Regional Trunk Sewer, and that's the largest cost project driven over the next couple of years, um, followed by the Water and Sewer Fund, which is funding the majority of those other projects that we're going to discuss this evening. Um, in putting together tonight's slide in the presentation, I realized that there was two projects that I inadvertently omitted um, and we didn't discuss them, and they're kind of a blend. Uh, we've, it's the Old Bridge Street Infrastructure Project and the Court Street um, Infrastructure and Streetscape Project. Both of these projects um, deal with uh, trying to come back into an area and make it more pedestrian friendly, um, make it um, more of a downtown feeling. And so as part of this project, before we want to put those amenities above ground, we want to look at the infrastructure below ground. In the past, these projects had been divided up as um, a separate water and sewer project and then the streetscape portion. And it made more sense that just let's just add it as one project. So in this particular case, we've got Old Bridge, um, and it's going from roughly Ann Street to Railroad Street. Um, and it's actually on page three on the handout that you have before you. And that's causing us a quarter of a million dollars, just water and sewer? No, it's water and sewer, and then we're also trying to... No, 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 to just us, just water and sewer. N no, the... Um, out of the total for the water and sewer is is 250,000 and the yeah. capital reserve is at 884 and of that I think there is some cost associated with putting power underground <clears throat> and so we haven't that's probably something we need to look at if we're going to fund it with water and sewer funds or um, general funds. Well, uh, how much is water and sewer going to have to put out for this project? What's the total? 1.1. Well, right the now capital, it's one. The capital one. reserve is not who? No. Is that not general fund? Oh. That is general fund. 250 then. Capital reserve. 250, that's what I thought. component to this, I believe. Okay. Capital reserve. Right, well, I'm, I'm with him. I mean, I don't think we should be bearing electrical lines with our water sewer fund. If it's a general fund project, Who? right? Well, that's yeah. what you're saying, I don't right? know what We're putting in a quarter, quarter of a million on that. <coughs> that's what it says here, okay. right. Whose idea is this? Um, Parks and Recreation or who? No, I uh, it's driven part of this is partially driven by outside because there there will be construction down at the courthouse so and on top of that this is currently a dot street and they're talking about turning it over to the city for it to become a city street and if they did that we would have to make some improvements or have them make improvements before we accepted it which it, in turn forces us to look at water and sewer and it may be that when we investigate the water and sewer in that area it's not as bad as what we're anticipating so it's kind of a worst case scenario but it's coming from mainly a downtown initiative that's, that's been right. going through with the city and the county that they've had joint meetings and discussions about and to point out to upgrade downtown it's not this, our idea why we're paying for it well in <laughs> Well, and it, admittedly, any time you do, I mean, at some point, we're going to have to resurface that street anyway, whether we do it or DOT does. And if either way, we've got to look at the water and sewer. But to point out, you know, this is designed in 2021, which means construction follows after that. So this could change several times before we get there. It could be that this moves back depending on need, or it could be that it moves up depending on need. So... You know, it's it's one of the projects that we've identified that's going to have to be done in the near future. That's why it's in the capital improvement plan. And you're correct. And uh, to point out the um, in the description, it says seven hundred fifty-one thousand would be if we put the power underground. And that's not necessarily that the water and sewer fund mm -hmm. would pick that up. And then there is some question about um, because we did put a portion of the. Um, of Court Street power underground, but we did it as we were redoing the street, you know, the first block, you know, Center for Public Safety. So we already had the trench dug, so it was much cheaper to just go ahead and get the conduit and put it, you know, it wasn't in the exact same trench, but we just had to make it wider and meet separation. So it could be that if we are doing a replacement, that cost is less. So it could be that, you know, the water and sewer fund digs the trench and some other fund actually picks up 
physically moving the cable in the conduit. Weren't the uh, lines down here uh, Cameron not too long ago? And did, did that indicate that these need to be replaced or anything? I don't think we've done this stretch yet. Not this particular street. We've been Cameron where they're going to build a new courthouse addition yes. down, sort of down away from that, but I don't think we've gotten there yet. So we don't know what the condition of That's these uh, clay pipes are. That's correct. And it may be that we can line them, and it would be much cheaper. So we so don't know that we anything don't. needs to be done. That's correct. Okay. And like Wally said, that right now it's just an idea. It's a placeholder. And yeah, it's a placeholder. It's, it's not for 2021. And you know, we when you're looking at trying to scope out the project, you just put worst case scenario, and think things will change significantly between now and when we get to that point. But I think it's a valid point that mm -hmm. Mr. Aragon makes that if somebody has a great idea and is pushing that idea forward and it drags the water and sewer into that project, then we should keep the cost of what water and sewer does to a minimum I mean, since we're not, we're not saying, hey, those pipes have got to re be replaced this year or in 2021 or whatever. If somebody wants to redo the whole Western Boulevard, you know, I don't know that yeah, we need to replace the pipes. Yeah, that's what it's, it's not ours. We didn't yeah. do it. Why should we, why should we, why should we spend it? We can spend it for something we need it for more that <laughs> got bad pipes, uh, infiltration, or something like that. Other than somebody wants to make a street for it, let them beautification take care of it. General funds. It's a good idea. <laughs> it's a good idea. General funds should be happy to pay for it. Yeah. Right. I think that is. That's it. That's a really old part of the city. Are those the original pipes? How old, oh, yes. how old are those pipes? I don't have a clue, but... They can carbon you know? date the clay in the pipes. He's guessing 50s. Okay. Yeah, they, they <laughs> gone, man. Well, the wooden ones are gone anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The wooden ones are definitely <laughs> gone. <laughs> yeah, they went to the clay ones after the wooden ones. Yeah. <laughs> they they definitely got There's nothing wrong with terracotta pipe. So some new projects um, for that you're that we're under, undertaking in FY17, is uh, US 17 North Drum Kellum Water and Sewer, the Henderson Drive Infrastructure, Green Boulevard Water at Cheney Creek, the Indian Drive Booster Station, and the isolation valves for Northwoods and Ellis Tanks. And we've previously discussed these projects in past meetings. We also, in, in looking at all of the projects, we adjusted the priorities of projects. We looked at projects that we had previously stated as committed, and we reevaluated them. And as you can see, we changed um, quite a few of them. We also did um, a couple of name changes to um, orient everyone to the actual projects we're talking about. So for the FY19 water and sewer project, we added West Bay Shore um, to identify that. Um, to better identify the, the Blue Creek School Road area, we, we identified Southwest so everyone knew what the area of town we were referring to. Again, added the Commerce and Memorial to the waterline replacement for 19. And we actually have two projects that are dealing with US 17 North. And so we added uh, North Drummer Kellum Road um, to one of the projects to kind of differentiate between the two. And, uh, and as Wally was talking about earlier, we, uh, we looked at some of the project schedules and we looked at some of, the, some of the projects. Can we, you know, can we push some of these projects out? And as you can see, one of the first two are the Court Street and Newbridge. We moved those out that were scheduled for 17 and 19 to 18 and 20. Um, the Half Moon Creek Water Sewer Project, we shifted that two years. That project was actually developer driven. We haven't had much conversation with them, so we moved that out. Um, and then even though we just added the Ellis Outfall G1 and G2 this fiscal, or to this year's CIP, the proposed 17, we went ahead and we've already moved those forward to 20 and 21. We're all, to, I guess we can in here. I was just going to wonder what their um, priority were on those that you moved. Were they? Um, um, it's on page 15. The G1 is um, slated as a high priority, and um, so is uh, G2, which is also high. Additionally, we changed um, some of the other projects, the US-17 North Water and Sewer Extensions. We moved that out by a year. We moved West Bay Shore out by two years. 
Um, and we've the FY17 water line replacement, we moved that from 17 to 18. If we have a question about something you want us to interrupt to, we want to wait sure. till the end. Sure. Yeah. Can you go back to the priorities that you've moved? Ooh. Why did you down? This one. There you go. Why did you downgrade the Ellis Lift Station? The project, the station itself is operational. Uh -huh. The issue is just access when it rains. When it floods. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so it is, it's a project that's been in the CIP. It is a needed project. Uh -huh. um, we have had conversations with the property owner to gain access, but when we're comparing that project to the other projects, it, it, for our needs, it became, it was just more of a medium project than a high project. But it, it's a project that we still want to undertake. It's just, a, you know, we just downgraded it from high to medium. Because when we had discussed that and they talked about what they had to do when there was heavy rain, Flooding. That sounded like you guys are going to wind up with a workers' comp claim. Is what it sounded like. Well, and I think Pete said in that meeting, if they can't get to it, they don't go. So we don't we don't want to put our people in jeopardy okay. um, or in danger. But you know, if you look at access during a short period of time mm -hmm. to something versus <clears throat> something that's more likely to fail, um, you know we. We've and gone. it wasn't a huge amount, course, compared to some of the other ones, it wasn't a huge amount right. of money either. Mm -hmm. and of course, admittedly, the I, did, I probably didn't catch it, but the two, the G1 and G2 mm -hmm. should probably not be a high priority. They should probably be something closer to a medium priority. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that we need to do, but we yeah. don't have to do today. Okay. So. But that situation's been like that for how long now? The Ellis? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it keeps time. getting bumped, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. And part of it, we've tried to solve it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. it, we just keep running into challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not an easy solution. I can't remember how many years ago we took a, a tour down there during a heavy rain. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that was a, quite a while ago, and it was, they were talked about they were going to do something about it then. <clears throat> okay. Where is... Uh... Southwest Blue Creek on the what page? You have any idea? Uh, we can find it. Come on. It is page twenty-six. Twenty who? Twenty-six. So, um, do you remember what the project scope is? Sorry. Do you remember what the scope of the project is? No. Um, the project initially started off with an extension of a water line from roughly where DOT's office is off of Wilmington Highway um, all the way down to Blue Creek School Road. And the thought was is that there's an area out there that's identified as a light industrial, and with the Southwest pump station right in that close uh, proximity, that would be an easy access to supply both water and sewer to that parcel. Well, we started looking into this and we actually decided that we had um, uh, we needed to evaluate the larger basin of how to convey water we've had some issues with low pressure off of yop road and that in the freedom village area so we've actually taken a step back the scope's grown and we've actually hired someone to do some modeling of that whole area um, they just had their kickoff meeting within the last month um, once we get those results back then we can kind of better better define uh, how we're going to move forward in this particular area. So it might it might be a little bit more than what we've actually initially scoped. Is in the city limits? The, um, it, it covers the area that is in the city limits, but it also covers an area that's slightly outside of the city limits. What area is that? Blue Creek School oh, Road. Blue Creek School Road. Yes. To, um, we already got the sewer plant there. Right? That's correct. We, uh, on Wassa, we have an agreement with on Wassa, the Springdale Acres, that used to be a, a small treatment package plant mm -hmm. um, through an agreement it was we constructed a lift station they assisted in funding <coughs> a portion of that and then they took that plant offline directed it into our system so we treat that right. um, and we have an agreement but we also built in additional capacity that the city paid for looking at potential growth kind of you know closer to 17 that would be more commercial or light industrial in nature um, so the, and the idea was when we did that, that there would be a portion that would become city limits out there. 
Um, and if we do that, then there's a question of how do you supply them water, which was where the um, project came from. But as we were doing, um, I think Greg is the one that did it, either Greg or Alden, um, did some, you know, as he would term it, back of the napkin calculations, and basically said that it was very tight. And when we started talking with the water plant, um, they pointed out that we have had low pressure concerns along Yelp Road. Matter of fact, I think it's Walmart installed a booster pump to to supply the pressure that they needed. Um, I'm sure primarily for fire suppression, but um, recognizing that, and I think the downtown tank turns over two or three times a day, Joe. So recognizing how fast we're turning a tank over and pressure complaints that we've had in that area, we recognize that we need to look at that whole area, not just one line. So that is the scope. And, you know, we don't know what will come out of the modeling effort, but it may come out and say we need some sort of tank in that area. So it's, you know, we're not sure yet. Um, this is one when we shared with city council, we told them that um, – once we had the modeling done and we had some sort of suggestion or direction, we would come back and talk to them in a workshop setting. We can just as easily bring that same presentation to you if you would like once we get that done. What's the closest tank to Southwest? The downtown one? Yes, ma'am. The Georgetown one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, and they, and we do have wells, Black Creek wells, mm -hmm. out along 24258 that help. Mm -hmm. But the downtown tank is what serves That's what's that area. Okay. Weren't we given in our presentation on this that the uh, tank can't get below a certain level at this time, and that's yeah, a disadvantage? They, they try to keep it to at... About 15 feet once it gets below 15, it's close to the upper area. About 15 feet. So there is, that is another reason to do this is because you don't that's, like to have that constriction on That's there. correct. And there's still some out along um, 258 mm -hmm. across kind of near tractor supply. There is some acreage there that could be a commercial development. Um, we don't know what that would be. At, at one time we heard rumors <coughs> that maybe a target, but I've since heard that that's not going to happen. But if we get a, you know, large retail area or something, you know, restaurants use a lot of water, something like that, we could see problems. So... That's, you know, with the existing development, we're already recognizing we have challenges. So we have to be careful with what we do with additional pressure. Well, you said a lot. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I'm saying you said before a lot of reason was the industrial <coughs> area out there providing that area and that you had potential customers lined up maybe down the roads that are they still potential customers or um, what's the I haven't on heard that? the I haven't heard the latest you know it, a lot of times what will happen is in the initial planning phase you hear a lot from them trying to gather information and then it takes them time to pull their plans together so there's a period of time where we don't hear from them and sometimes we have to follow up to say what's going on sometimes they'll tell us sometimes they won't um, so I don't know what is going on with that it, basically that's a a large acreage tract that's right off of right. Blue Creek School Road. Um, and I don't know, there was some interest <coughs> for flex space along there. I don't know whether that's going to continue, but, um, you know, the, what we're really concerned about is more importantly, what do we do for existing customers in that area? So that's a lot, when we, when we recognized we don't need to look at just an extension. We need to look at how we improve the overall system in that area. So, and it is something that if we don't have that development pressure, we just don't have to do that portion of the project at this point. You know, we can always try to time that. So it, this is something that we could end up making improvements to the existing system and then preparing for growth in the future. And didn't you explain that any of that that was done in that area off 258 or uh, Wood Creek area would be recouped with uh, facility fees. We did. So if we if we extended a water line out to Blue Creek School Road, we could do a special area district um, or a, a special service area, and we can associate all the costs that we made for those improvements 
to that area and at that time they come in they would pay normal facility fees plus whatever that special assessment is so and we have several of those around the city we have um, some in the um, North Marine Town Center area we have some around Piney Green we have I think four now and we track those through GIS So here's some more projects that we adjusted the schedule on. Um, I, as I stated, we, we pushed West Bay Shore out a couple years um, in FY17 waterline replacement. We moved, um, we moved out one year, and we're going to talk about the Castle Lane water supply wells, which we moved out a year as well. So for the raw water supply, um, when we talked during one of our meetings, we had uh, the Cretaceous monitoring wells or the Black Creek monitoring wells. That actually was a project that identified as a new project in FY17. And when we gave the presentation on what the project was, we said the need for it was to put the monitoring wells at Bird Park, that we needed to gather a year's worth of data in the hope that we could show the state that we're meeting the mandates that we didn't have to possibly go um, and seek that or read the reduction. Take another reduction. Um, and so realizing the need, we've actually have decided to pull that project out from FY17, and we're going to have it um, uh, present it to council for consideration during this fiscal year. So we've taken that out, of, and so that's why you'll see where it says FY16. We have pre-qualification um, pre applications out now for contractors. They're due tomorrow, um, and we're hoping to get them some contractors pre-qualified and specs in their hands in the coming weeks. So um, we're moving very rapidly on that project. So that being said, uh, we follow that with the, some supply wells. And then um, a couple years after that, we'll do the Castle Lane. So this is a, a, a we push out projects, which makes it a little bit <coughs> easier for um, timing and making sure we have the data before we move, move forward with the supply wells. And I, I'd like to add to that a little bit. Um, in looking at... The timing of the Castle Hain wells, um, there are some things that we're we're looking at now with the water resources group that we've mentioned, uh, you know, in the past, and some of the monitoring well efforts, the um, hydrostratigraphic framework analysis that we've talked about a couple of times. I can't say that very fast, but um, you know, there's a we're moving toward a regional philosophy of finding where the water's available and trying to locate our infrastructure such that we can take advantage of that and not just, you know, in the past, admittedly, what the city's done is looked for where land was available and then gone and seen if water was available through an agreement with a property owner or existing city-owned land. Um, and there's, you know, that's... That's a traditional practice. Omaso's done much of the same. Um, so now, as a as a regional group, we've decided, you know what, we need to be looking where the water <coughs> is below ground and trying to determine that and then trying to strategically locate our wells. And if we can keep our existing capacity in the Black Creek and possibly even gain some additional that we've lost back, um, it can push out the need for some of the Castle Hain Wells. Um, of course, with the Castle Hain Wells, the further we can spread that well field and spread out our rotation, the more viable that source is also. So we don't need to push it out indefinitely, but with our focus on the Black Creek and trying to better locate or strategically locate those wells, you know, it makes sense that we're going to have some time before we get to the Castle Hain wells. So we did slip that one one year. Wally, the Black Creek Marner <coughs> wells was an unplanned project for FY16. What impact will it have on the budget? Um, we are, well, Gail and I have talked about this a couple of times. I don't know that we've come up with a final decision because we don't have any bid numbers yet. Um, but one of the things we've looked at is trying to fund that through existing project savings. 
whether we include it in a project that we have some savings in or we create a new project and through a budget amendment moves the savings from that project over um, and that the um, as of right now of course we don't have a um, the formal agreement before council yet but um, that the monitoring wells also benefit on wasa because we're we're all in the same area together we both have to prove that the black creek is sustainable so we can't do it by ourselves, and they can't do it by their self because we're we're both in the same area pulling from the same aquifer so this is a joint study and they've agreed to fund a portion of it so you don't view moving it into fy16 busting the budget no we would use we would use project savings even if we have to close out a few projects to to pull the savings we would use project savings and we still have um, the water plant project is not completely closed because we're still finalizing some things with that project but there will be some savings in that project that we can use thank you well, how much are we pumping out of black creek now two million one and a half one and on a half average we we use the the castle Hain is we found that our our water plant operates best at two million gallons a day so we run our water plant and we supplement with the black creek how much is coming out of castle Hain? Uh, about two million gallons finished water right and we're running somewhere on average about three and a half million gallons a day and what is our usage about three and a half million gallons a day I thought it was up more than that I thought it was up we have peaks that are above that but I think the I think last year's average was 3.4 something if I remember right I was thinking so, we were up around close to five that's our peaks that's we're seeing peak. that in our peaks yes sir. what do you do when it gets to that you you pull more out of where Castle Hain or uh, you can't pull any more out of Black Creek um, Joe may have to help me with this answer but the the way the Black Creek the way our permit is written we can't average more than 1.5 million gallons per day so you have an annual total well actually we're averaging slightly less than 1.5 million gallons a day because our average is a little bit less than 3.5 million gallons a day total usage so there's a, a small saving incremental savings so as long as we get to the end of the year and we haven't if you took 365 times 1.5 million gallons that would be our, our permit total actually it's two I'm sorry if you took our permit is two million gallons a day mm -hmm. so even if we pull 1.5 on an average day we still have a half million gallons a day average of savings mm -hmm. um, was about 34 million gallons last year up from the Black Creek we actually did a water bank statement and we are actually to the bit of 88 million gallons uh, yeah, we, are, we, we can use the Black Creek one of the in the most okay thank you the challenge is operating our plant it right. doesn't it doesn't for some reason it just does not like to operate below two million gallons we have fouling problems with the membranes and um, we have more problems in our wells it's it likes to be run at two million gallons um, and so in summary we've as we've shown you that we've amended the scope and funding for um, quite a few of the projects and we've also adjusted the project schedules to account for um, trying to meet the, the budget demand. And so in the end, there is no rate increase. Um, I know we kind of went over everything as a treetop level. We, in the past couple of months, have gone into some detail on each of the projects. But if you have any other questions on, that are specific to any of the projects, we'd be happy to try to summarize and, or review the scope again. Question, and I missed last month's meeting there was a project where they were going to do Woodland Drive not the park did that fall out Woodland Drive. Drive yeah it was in the December I wonder if that's oh, one of our water replacement. replacement yeah park place in Woodland yeah that, that was when we was found it was in better shape or something like then that then you thought it's, did they uh, camera it and I think I think what happened is we moved it over to I and I, the I and I project we might have is that, okay. is that one we moved over to the INI project <laughs> we can get that information that's yeah, fine I, I don't Great really. answer. 
thinking of that information for you. I think that's one we moved over. Okay, I was just curious because I didn't see it, and it had been in the preliminary one we looked at. That's what happens when I miss something. That's right. We need to change. Priority change. So moving forward, um, our, uh, our goal is to have the uh, draft CIP of the entire CIP to council um, in March, and then they'll adopt it with the, their budget by June. Um, and so our um, goal for this evening is that if we could get your um, recommendation on the projects that we've presented before you for water and sewer, so we could take that recommendation um, to council. I so move <coughs> that the committee uh, endorses the CIP that's in front of us as uh, to the council. Do we have a motion to send the current one we've been looking over right now to the council for approval? Any Anything else, Tom, on you want to add to that? No, I just recommend that we we move this to the council. We send our recommendation that the council accept this CIP segment of the CIP. We do we have a second to that motion? I'll second it. We have a second. All in favor? How about discussion? Sir? How about discussion? <laughs> what do you want to discuss? No, oh, but you didn't say discussion. <laughs> <laughs> he never asked for, uh, you know. Mr. Aragona, would you like to discuss anything on the motion? I don't agree with a couple of them, but we'll go along with them anyway. It's like, it's <laughs> Overall, it's looking good. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All right. Motion carried. You know, she didn't ask for it. I'm going to mess you all up one of these times and tell you to raise your left hand, and you won't know what the heck is going to go. I know, and you keep starting. I'm left handed. I keep wanting to do this. <laughs> okay. We have old business. Do we have any discussions on old business, Mr. Aragona? Would you like to bring this up? Hey, we're the only old business in this place, dude. <laughs> you're, you're old, so you have old yeah, business. Yeah, I'd say we're the old business. <laughs> uh, I have one thing I would like to just share with you. I hate that Greg walked out because he, does, he deserves a lot of this credit. Um, but if you remember... Last year in our budget, we were discussing sludge removal, um, and during that um, during that discussion, the manager challenged us and us be primarily being Pete and William at the uh, land application site to look for alternate methods to um, what we've done in the past, which is dredge. You drain the lagoon system. You take out the sludge, you have to land apply it, which takes special permit um, and is very costly. And through that, uh, Pete and William actually found a company called Blue Frog that we've talked about a couple of times that claims that they can digest our sludge right in the aerated lagoon, the large aerated lagoons um, associated with the, the treatment process. And through Greg's research and um, analysis of the um, of Blue Frog's um, I guess equations and, and requirements to meet permits our permit requirements um, Greg actually got the state to approve doing the um, doing Blue Frog as a um, maintenance pilot study so we'll have we can do it no modification to our permit um, we can actually start moving forward now with um, that, that product um, and changing out some of our aerators. Um, what we're going to do is next Tuesday on the workshop, we're planning to have um, a presentation on Blue Frog to the council so that they can see what, you know, what we've been looking at, what the um, process would look like. And then from there, um, at their following meeting, if they approve, we will have to have an... Um, What's the term I'm looking for? A sole source. Mm -hmm. We would have to have approval for sole source <laughs> from city council to move forward with that specific product um, because it would be a, a pilot project with new technology. Um, 
So that's pretty good news. Um, we're excited about that, so I wanted to share that with you. And when's the council meet? When, when's it going to be to the council? Uh, it'll be to the uh, sole source agreement will be to the council the first meeting in March. And that's when they're going to discuss what it's all about in a whole bit. No, we'll do, the, we'll do a brief presentation to them on Tuesday night, next Tuesday night. Next Tuesday. Right yes, sir. At the workshop. At the workshop. Five o'clock. Yes. Now, is this a chemically treated process? No, nope. it, it is done through aeration. Um, and if you would like, we can give you the same presentation at your next um, board meeting. But basically, we use an, uh, an aerator now um, primarily to, to turn up the water, separate the solids, and add dissolved oxygen into the wastewater. Did I miss anything? And if you go out there, it looks, it fountains isn't the right word, but you see this big, cone coming up. I know you've seen it when you've been out there. Well, these, um, the way they work is they actually add about the same amount of dissolved oxygen, which is critical to our permit, but instead of aerating like this, they actually aerate across the top of the lagoon, and it creates this rotation, and the idea is in this rotation that it's creating, um, it create some sort of bio, they call it seeds, that actually will start consuming the organic material in the sludge. Um, and it's, um, it's basically anaerobic digestion, I think, um, at the bottom, that just occurs at the bottom of the lagoon. So it's, it's actually just a piece of equipment that changes the water flow, the hydraulics, that actually causes this. Is this going to be a proof of concept? Because I know there was the concern that the only places they had done it was for much smaller. That's correct. And so, well, I mean, or has that been resolved? It's, if you've gotten some sort of confidence that this will work in the volume that we have as compared to what you saw at the other sites? We have a level of confidence. Um, you know, it, it, we, have some, we have some reservations. One, the the size of our lagoons or the size of our the amount of our flow and treatment time compared to other places that we've seen um but there is a you know when i hear proof of concept it kind of leads me to you try it if it doesn't work it goes away and you owe absolutely nothing um we don't have that but we have a guarantee that if they have not met what they've stated we have the option of returning them for a small fee. I think the the only thing they won't cover is engineering cost. We get 75% of our expense back. So fairly close to a proof of concept. Okay, because at this point, we don't know that it will work with the That's way they correct. want to inject the water, the baffles that they want to insert, and therefore this is kind of seen if it will work in ours compared to the what you saw, which they let their water sit in their lagoons much longer than we do. That's correct. And yes, they have so a lot less volume. That's correct. And that's going to eliminate the sludge. Um, reduce it. It reduces it. They, in the other, in the other we, we actually went and toured a couple of plants. And again, one of the concerns is um, holding time or contact time. But at one of the plants, um, we talked to the chief operator, and they actually pulled, you know, this thing floats like normal aerators. They actually drug it into the lagoon with a tractor because the sludge was so deep. And they did not dredge, and now they keep a base layer of sludge at about 8 inches to a foot. So you have to have some sludge in order for it to continue digesting. But once it gets to that level, it's sort of a, the idea is that it's a self-sustaining level. The, the concern we have is they were closer to you know, a 20 day or 25 day contact time and we're closer to like a six or nine day contact time. So that, that's our biggest concern. Um, but admittedly, if you look at the number of these units in their pond versus the number in our pond, we're probably, you know, I, I think they had three units or something and we're talking 14 for just one of our trains. So, and then, and the idea is that we have we essentially have three trains in our treatment process. Each train has two two aerated lagoons, one small, one larger. Um, we're going to take the large middle train 
the, the large lagoon in the middle train, and that's what we're going we're gonna to run as a pilot study. Um, and in looking at this, one of the things that we found, the way that they're doing this is through lower horsepower motors, which creates um, a, a pretty significant savings in electricity. So even if it doesn't completely reduce the sludge, there may be a large, we may get the same <laughs> treatment process we currently get now, but we may save significantly in power costs. So we'll just, we'll have to see. We would too. <laughs> you won't run your cones while they're doing this. Once you switch over, you're switching over to theirs, right? It, just in one, just in one of the lagoons. So we'll still have two large lagoons that have our current aerators in them. Okay. Um, and so, and the the great thing about that is we can run a direct comparison to water quality. That's what I was going to ask you. Yes. And are they all on one electric, or can you monitor the no, use of the electric too? No, they're all on one. Too? They're okay. all on one. All right. But doing one we should see a drop I right mean, yeah i mean uh, you could split course, the lines and put meters on it if you wanted to we could or we could try to watch kilowatts or something but know, what's going to be nice because like you said the comparison so if we have an enormous rain or whatever you're going to see how they do against our systems that's exactly right okay and that's the plan okay that's good are there any type of chemicals at all using these no sir and we have chemicals that we use in our treatment process. That won't change. But no, it is, it is strictly pulling the aerators that are in and going with the snore technology. <coughs> so I'm concerned about chemicals. No, sir. Where you put in the thing, the no, we're, we, we are not changing anything that we currently do as far as chemical feeding. How long are you planning on letting it go? We got the project approved for two years. two years. I think, if I remember correctly, they said that they could reduce it in 12 months or 18 months or something. Um, but we wanted enough time with the state to go mm -hmm. for a full two years. To, so we go through multiple cycles. Yeah. Will we ever get a chance to see how it kind of operates? Yes, sir. We'll be happy to give you another tour of the land treatment site once we get them in place. Speaking of input, Pete, I saw on an email where Sunday was 15.4 million gallons. Is that a record? Second highest record since the plant was built. I was going to cover that in your business. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> we can do it now if you'd like. Mm -hmm. We're done. I, want to, I did not thank the two ladies for their presentation tonight. You did a good job. We appreciate it. Hope you'll come back and give us some more here. All right. Any other old business? New business. I have new business. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Uh, it, unfortunately, we all know how the weather has been lately. Well, we've oh. run into some real challenges at our land treatment site. Um, actually, our lagoons are at, one of our lagoons is are at Freeboard which means we had to report to the state, which means we go into emergency spraying. Of course, the freezing cold does not help with emergency spraying because you can't, uh, you know, if everything turns to ice, you can't get anything out. But, um, it, you know, we're not in any, in any danger of our lagoon overtopping or anything like that. But because we hit freeboard in one of our lagoons, and actually it was our operating lagoon, um, we did have to report that to the state. Um, we had, as Mr. Thomas mentioned, we had the second highest 24-hour total last week um, of, since the, the plants opened, and that was 15.4 million gallons over a 24-hour period. Um, so, and, you know, we had, we went through, I think it was Thursday, Friday with rain, and then Saturday we didn't have rain, and Sunday we did, and I think it added, at LTS we had, seven just under seven and a half inches maybe of rainfall um which as you can imagine that means seven and a half inches added directly into our lagoons so, so that was even that, counting that doesn't the, count the increased flow from the city at the the 15.4 million gallons so obviously that's a challenge but we did want you to know that we had to um that we did have to initiate emergency spraying um, and that one of our lagoons is at Freeboard. That's it. That's it. 
Anybody have any questions for Wally on that? Do you have any other issues during all that rain? Of okay. Nothing I major. have some new business. <clears throat> on Wassel, okay, we had our meeting. Like I said before, we are now meeting only every other month. <clears throat> they have completed their northwest regional plant off of 258. Their Sur Western Onslow Trunk Sur Phase 1, which is from Burton Industrial Park to the Northwest Regional Water <coughs> ah, System up there by Richlands, the project, that project has been completed. Dixon has a reverse osmosis iron project. They had quite a bit of iron in their, their water down there. It will be completed on May 12th of 2016. They put in two new wells in Castle Haynes <coughs> off of Highway 50, and they'll be running approximately 16,000 feet of pipeline, 12-inch PVC, that will go to the Dixon Water Treatment Facility. And they, that will be up for bids in April of this year. Uh, let's see. They're, they have a project that is going to do away, decommission the Kenwood pump station, and it will be going into the, hang on, 258 and on into Richlands for treatment. Uh, let me see what else here. They plan on having a public meeting later this year. They're going to do new surge use ordinance following the state's template. Additionally, they're, they're going to be calling in some of the general public contractors and such as that on this. They had at Grants Creek Farm, it's called, it's out on the White Oak Service area, 245 lots for warehouse or real estate's going to be doing that. Somerset Place at Stateside, which is in the Richlands area, Sides Construction Company. They're going to be 201 residential units in that section. Uh, planning board. Let me see where that's at. Now. Uh, well, I, yeah, here we go. Enough papers. They, we had a map amendment changing from industrial to a corridor commercial. Now this would be along part of Western Boulevard and Lejeune Boulevard. If any of you are familiar with where Dr. Glass used to have his animal hospital there on 24, there's a pawn shop next to it. It's going to be from there on up to the corner of Western and then down that side of Western Boulevard up to the next street up there. And uh, they're going to change that. It's going to be, I have a map here if anybody cares to see you can see what they're talking about. Wait a minute. Going up to Bryn Mawr Road. And here's Dr. Glasses down here. Pawn shop. What's a pawn shop? Do you know, Randy? What? Parking pawn. Yeah, parking pawn. It's going from there on up. That's the only thing we did at the planning board. That will have no impact on the, what the infrastructure is there. Your grease report and everything's on your, <coughs> your notes and all that we got. Pete, how much are they having to pump out of the Northwoods pump station? How much sludge and all? Is it still building up like it was? You mean Henderson? I mean, Henderson, what did I say? Out of Mill Creek? Yeah, Henderson, yeah. Um, we just had it done about a month ago. It took them three and a half days to pump it out. How deep was it then? It was about five foot. About five foot. So it's running about the same that it has been then? Well, we went a little longer this time than we did last time for uh, the holy degrees. That's good.
Does anybody else have any more questions? All right, I'll entertain a motion. Well, let me say this. We're going to, well, where's our, I got more papers here than, oh, okay. Our next meeting will be March 10th, 5.30 p.m. here in A and B meeting rooms on the 6th, 2016. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. We second. have a move. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Raise, please raise your right hand if you agree. Thank you. <laughs> Meeting adjourned.